praise God. The Bible does talks about living in the last day. And I believe this is the last day because after COVID, so many things have changed. Many of us, some of us, we are struggling. Some of us, uh, we are trying so hard. And we have to confess. Sometimes we feel so discouraged. We feel like, God, what is happening? Why suddenly my life is, you know, in a struggle? And more than your faith, I do understand that in your life, it does affect. Because every day you have to get up, you got to do whatever you need to do. And you find it is getting harder. You know, those retired, they got nothing to do. And that created a huge problem. I have some relatives, they are, they are retired, but they are not happy with their retirement. And they constantly call and say, you know, I, I need this, I need that, and the demand. And so with you and I, I sought God and said, God, is there an answer for the church? What do we do? You know, because our faith cannot be just up here. Because we are going through. We might not share it with someone who come to church Sunday, praise the Lord, sing the song, and then go back. So you got to ask yourself, your faith, what you are going through, does God know? Let's all stand. First Peter chapter 1 come to my attention. Where during Peter's time, you know Peter, right? He's the one that is the chief of the apostles. Very boisterous. Everything he go through in life. He even renounced Jesus' curse. And say, I don't know this man. Because out of fear. Out of his own safety. Because he's human. He's like you and I. He goes through also. And after that, Jesus is taken away in Mount Olive. And then he's got to again lead the whole group. You think they didn't give him headache? They do. And even Paul have to stand and say, Peter, uh, you are doing something wrong, not right here. And he, he realized that. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, he said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, we just sang the song, mercy, God's mercy, God's love, God's compassion, God's faithfulness. He said, God's mercy, abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, or unspoiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Here is Peter, chief apostles, and during his leading of the people or being the top guy, the churches was under the Roman Empire. And Emperor Nero blamed the Christian for everything, including the burning of Rome, if you remember. While he was playing his fiddle, Rome was burning and he blamed the Christian. So a Christian really went through a tough time. No job, persecuted, ostracized, and then they have to go underground. They were leaving their faith in all kinds of, you can say, trouble, trials, difficult times. And they are wondering, God, we are living for you. Are you still there? Are you, you know, realizing what we are going through? Our pain, our difficulties, people were being killed. God, are you still sitting on your throne? 
And here is Peter writing to the first century Christian or during his time, trying to encourage them with this. And that is in verse four. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. This morning, I want to bring your attention. I don't know what's your situation. When my wife was away from me for a few days, I felt like half of me is gone. I don't know how to function, and now I sleep the whole day. My wife is not there. You know, you've been, I've been comfortable having my wife with me for next year, 40 years, anniversary. Suddenly, my wife is not there. For a few days, I like, oh my God, I've gone already. So I feel unkind. But thank God, there was Jesus. There was Jesus. You know, our flesh, sometimes something missing or we lost someone, we don't feel like what's like something missing already. And Peter realized the saints was going through the same thing. Some were killed by Rome. Some went through hard, trying to earn money and they say, no job for you, you are a Christian, no job. And they were going through. And so Peter trying to encourage them, you have an inheritance. Brother Mutu preached last Sunday, my father's house. It was so good knowing my father's house. But this, Today, I want to tell you about your imperishable inheritance. You have an inheritance that will not perish, that will not be spoiled, that will not rot away. Because Jesus said, the things you have in this world, the more, the rust, the thieves will come and destroy it. But now your faith in the inheritance in heaven reserved for you, it is not going to perish. Nothing can touch it. And your faith is on that. So let us all pray and ask God, whatever your situation, I want to tell you, Jesus say, focus on me. I'm there. Jesus is there. Don't worry about it. your faith must not be in your circumstances, your surrounding. You're going through. Don't worry. God is there. And he will make sure you are in his hand. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, this morning for those online, that this message for this generation, this period of time, especially after COVID, things that we don't know and it's getting tougher, but that, Lord, our faith is focused on our salvation, that, Lord, our inheritance that is everlasting in eternity, like Peter say, it cannot perish. It is kept for us. Help us, Lord, to understand this morning that our faith is focused on that which is eternal. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen. Lord bless you. You may be seated. So the early Christians, they were going through difficult times for their faith. In their suffering, in their poverty, and everything that they are feeling, Peter has got to do something. And the Spirit of God inspired Peter to say, tell the people. Because they are the children of God, and this morning you are the children of God. That's why you are here. And God wants you to know you have an inheritance that cannot perish in this life. Everything perish. That's why the Bible tells us uh, in uh, the gospel where Jesus say, you know, the butterfly, or rather in Matthew chapter 6, he say, lay not up treasure for yourselves on earth where mort, not butterfly, okay, mort. You know your clothing, you keep in the cupboard, and then you have these insects that is going to destroy your clothing. 
especially in those days, they don't have all this insecticide and all this perfume stuff to keep those, uh, I don't know how you call it, the covered kind of uh, insects that would destroy your clothing. And during their time, and also the rust that will corrupt whatever metal you have, whatever cooking wares you have. And because their house is made of mud, the thieves will break the wall, make a punch a hole, and then go in and steal whatever they have. Thieves. So Jesus is trying to say, don't worry about your earthly life. Life will take care of itself. You're not going to die. But that if you focus too much on all that stuff, you will realize it's not everlasting. But your faith in your salvation is everlasting. And Jesus explained during his time that people emphasize so much on their living. They are saving. There was no bank. There was no company, security company that take care of whatever you earn. And then you put in like today, we all have bank account. We put the money there. Or when our salary is given, it's inside a bank. Those they know, they, they take it back home. In fact, they have barter trade system. They work for certain men and then they say, here is a, you know, so much grain, how many pounds or how many kilos. And then they take it back and store it. Then the insect, the rats, and all that will come and destroy it. And so Jesus realized their concern. And Paul and Peter, they tried to encourage the believers that in this life, the things don't last forever. And we've got to get it right. Because God is protecting you in your difficulties Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always. And we do have difficulties. The story is told about a couple that was drug addict. It is a real story. It's not a makeup story. I read it, the news. And they were drug addicts. And they give birth to a girl. And throughout their whole life, until the day they died, the girl grew up homeless, 16 years old. The girl, did not take drug, but was a homeless, scavenging for food and all. And eventually, the girl said to herself, coming to know God, she said, I will not be homeless. I want to be somebody. I have faith in God. Oh yes, my father, mother, drug addict, died already. And this girl, she did not allow her circumstances, her history, to keep her from being what she wanted to be. She enrolled in the high school. They say, no, cannot. Your age, you already should be in college. You say, but I need my high school certificate. And of course, the government funded, you know. Eventually, she tried, tried, tried. She got it. She passed a high school. She applied to Harvard University for a scholarship to do her degree. And guess what? She was accepted. She graduated from Harvard University. This 16 years old girl, because coming to know God, she got the sense of her identity. She got to do something. She refused to focus on the circumstances, refused to focus on the past. She focused on God, what God created me to be. This is a real story. Happened in the US. She became somebody in God. And you are somebody in God. And this is our problem. Too much time we spend on things that doesn't help us. And that's why Paul is trying to draw the Christian, their attention to the imperishable inheritance. The inheritance that you are going to receive in that day, that is not going to be spoiled, defiled, or pass away. It will last into eternity. Can I hear a good amen on that? You have an in eternal inheritance. You have. 
And God wants you to know. Job went through, you know Job's story. I think it's one of the most severe trials, the most severe time of a person's life. And suddenly from riches, he became so poor to the point, even his life also is worth nothing. Because the wife said, curse God and die. You see, the wife told Job, before you die, you need to curse God. Blame it on God. And that's what a lot of people do. Things don't work well. I, I'm angry. I'm not happy. They allow their circumstances, emotion, overwhelm them. And then they say, I don't want to go to church anymore. I'm not happy. Job would have done that. Job would have said, God, why you let all this happen to me? My children die, my house burned down, and people kind of rob me. Now my hell also like that. And see, my wife said, curse you and die. What a wife. I hope you don't have a wife like that. Or a husband like that. Don't always blame the wife. Sometimes blame the husband. I hope you don't have We need to encourage one another. Seeing the days are evil. And so, Job, he said, well, you know, really, God is the one that is almighty and, you know, I need to know that even I die, I have an inheritance. That's what Job said. I will see God. I will see God. That means Job believed in his inheritance. He said, though I die, this one all gone, I will see God. Though all these are happening to me and I don't like it, and I'm, I'm not going to, you see, Job said, I can do something. I will not allow all this misery, all this stuff to affect me. My faith is in God. And I'm going to see God. And even if I die, this body perish. My faith, my inheritance will not perish. So, people of God, why are you here today, those online? It's because our faith is in our inheritance that cannot perish. And God wants you to continue in your faith and keep that. I have something so valuable. It cannot perish. No thieves can come and take it away. I will not allow the devil to sidetrack me. You know, the devil is a devil. He's a liar. He's an instigator. The devil is always negative. And the devil say, ah, you know God don't want you. You know God this, you know God. So don't allow the devil to work on your emotion, on your mind. You say, devil, get deep behind me. I will focus on God. God is good. And all the times, God is good. We need to say it. We need to say, you know, in life sometimes, we drown over what the devil is trying to put us into. Yes, I, know I, might, not, I might not be successful in getting a job. I, know I might not be successful in getting my finances get done. I might not be in my hell. But God, I'll praise you anyhow. I will praise you. Because all the days of my life, this is what I have. I know my creator liveth and that I have hope. And my hope is lively. And in that day, I shall see God. You got to make the affirmation. In that day, when this life is over, I shall see God. And this is where we have to say to ourselves, why, why am I living here today for? It's because I have faith in Jesus. I'm going to see Jesus. It's eternal. It cannot be. So, so Peter is trying to tell the same. I know your suffering. I know what you're going through. I know what Emperor Nero is trying to do to you. But hey, don't let the devil sidetrack you. And he say, you have an inheritance. Incorruptible. Unspoiled or undefiled. Fade not away, reserve in heaven for you. And this is what Peter is saying. It's reserved. It is for you. But you got to say, God, I'm looking forward to it. 
I'm looking forward to it. You know, faith is a very powerful thing. The Bible says faith is not seen. But the result will come is upon your reaction. All the time, it's so important how you reacted. I told you the story about this 16 uh, years old girl and the parent are drug addict. People would have thought, ah, the parent are drug addict, gone for her, give up hope. No, she said no. When she comes to know God, I'm going to turn it around. And, was, and Paul said what? Such were some of you. Today, why are you here? You turn it around. You didn't allow your bad history to continue destroying you. You say, I turn it around. And that's why many of you today, you're blessed. Because you reacted not according to your feeling, not according to your circumstance. You reacted according to God. God say, I created you. You're going to be what I have created you to be. Let's thank the Lord for a while. Let's say, Jesus, thank you, God. I want to thank you, God. I used to be down and out. I'm lost. But today I know what I am in you, Jesus. In Jesus, I can be what he wants me to be. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And this is another real story. And it encourages you, inspire me. I want to share with you. And this is recently a U.S. pilot was shot down in Eastern Europe over the walls. And he managed six days to stay alive, not to be caught by the Russian. <laughs> stay alive. And then when finally he was rescued, took back home to the U.S., this is what he said. They asked him. They said, how, how was it like six days hiding from the enemies and trying to stay alive? He said, I will tell you during this trial, the Bible was my inspiration. The inspiration of God's word carry me through these difficult times of my life, which I cherish. It came through the love I have for God, the love I have for my family, the love I have for my life that God gave me. I look at my entire combat experience through my faith. And so incredibly, this young man calls his ordeal the most positive six days I ever had in my life. You see, he's got a love for God. He's got a love for his family. And he's got a love for what his life God has given him. And that is what faith is. It keeps you going. When the going is tough, because you are toughened by the word of God, you keep going. You will not let it affect you. And some of you today, you're doing that. It's tough. But you say God's word is going to make me tougher. And I will keep going. It will not affect me. I will not give up, give in, and quit. The Bible says in the last day, many will quit because they allowed. Their faith is not upon God. It is upon their circumstances. Their feeling. And many a time I've said to you, don't, don't allow your feeling. We all got feeling. Our feeling can just fluctuate. Like this morning weather. Suddenly sunshine, suddenly thrum, rain. It turns, it go, just go like that. You know? And you find you yourself also like that. Sometimes you're happy. Not like, everybody will run away. <laughs> yeah. I'm speaking for myself. So my wife will run away. It fluctuates. I'm feeling sometimes happy, sometimes not happy. Yeah. And God is saying, well, you're human. Peter, you're human. Job, you're human. Moses, you break all my Ten Commandments, you're human. You thought Moses is the meekest, meek fella. You're, you're kidding. He broke all Ten Commandments. Out of what? Angry. Suddenly he couldn't take it. And that was God's commandment, not his commandment, but he broke it anyhow. Just like you people today, they, 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 you know, Jesus, they, they, and Jesus looked at them, but like the song we sang, Jesus still loved them. Because Jesus is no human. 
you need to be kept understanding because Paul said, don't be ignorant. So when you know your hope that you have an imperishable inheritance, you know, everybody loves an inheritance, right? Early inheritance, you know, Israel, they inherited the promised land. But I will tell you until this day, after so many decades, the city of Jerusalem has been attacked, fought, and it's not kept by them. They keep losing it. And until they're still fighting over Jerusalem. And that's what Jesus say. Your inheritance on earth, a lot of trouble. <laughs> Don't try to protect it. You know, you will lose it. Many of us, we don't have inheritance. And those of you you have, God bless you. Amen. Make me your friend. Yeah. Because people got inheritance. I got some relatives, some niece. They got inheritance. You know, the father owned some land in Monkara. Uh, see all your eyes go. Monkara, no. Some lands in Monkara. Back those days. Kaya Raya today. They build a condo. Uh. Oh my God, Kaya Raya. Lah. So they got inheritance. But realize that those inheritance will not last forever. God is trying to tell, or Peter is trying to tell the people, it won't last forever. It's all temporal. You might get envious. You might say, oh, how I wish I have some inheritance. You know, my father owned at least, I would say, seven horses. Race horses, you know, those days in Nampang. They, and I thought I inherited one horse. One horse, you know. Race horse. A race horse can fetch quite a bit of money. You know, you sell it to someone who wants to have a race horse in the mines there. Suddenly, my father said, here is your inheritance. A picture of the horse. Horse number five. I said, okay, I can't ride it. I can't pet it. Only a picture, I can look at it. So I say, thank you. <laughs> thank you for this picture. Hmm, very nice. You know, you, you laugh. And this is true. I still have the picture. I, it's in my iPhone. I take a picture of it. So every time I reminded, ah, this picture of this horse number five. But I have a greater inheritance today. And I thank God. I have an imperishable inheritance in eternity. That I'm going to see Jesus. Thank you, Papa, Heavenly Father, for the inheritance. So realize this, this morning, you have an inheritance. Eternal inheritance. So don't worry about the early inheritance. Whether you got it or you don't have it. Like Job, I will be glad, for I shall see God. And you will be glad, you will see God. Let's all stand. Today, we need to see in Mark chapter 10, again, Jesus realized people were following him, his disciples. In fact, the 12 disciples, they fell except Judas. They fell. We have been following you and we need some assurance. You know, if I'm following Jesus, I need some assurance. I need to know, hey, Jesus, you know, 40 years I've been following you and Come on, give me something. I need something, Jesus. You've got to be honest. Sometimes this flesh is flesh. And so Jesus realized that, you see, Jesus in Mark chapter 10, verse 29, say, I assure you. That means I want you to get the assurance. I assure you. And most solemnly say to you, there is no one who has given up a house, brothers or sisters, mother or father, Children of farms, that means your business, okay, your earning, for my sake and for the gospel's sake, who will not receive a hundred times as much now in this present age, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and farms, along with persecution. And in the age to come, eternal life, your inheritance. Your inheritance. Amen. This is what Jesus said. Your inheritance. 
when Jesus looked at Peter's failure, and Peter got many failures following Jesus, but he became the chief speaker of the apostles. You know what Jesus uh, said to Peter? Jesus said, Peter, you can choose. You can choose to be bitter, angry, because of your failures, because you didn't meet up. But here is my grace. You got to do it right. Because the Bible says, God's grace, unmerited favor, God giving you favor, no charge, no limit. And God wants you to use His grace. It's sufficient for you. It will help you. Just like the story of the pilot who almost lost his life, played shot down alone in a foreign country, trying to keep alive. What was running through his mind during the six days of danger? He said, I love God. I love my family. I love the life God gave me. These are Christian. What about that girl? She did not let all such negative. Imagine father, mother, drug addict, and died, overdose. She would have wasted her life. But she said, no, I'm going to do something about it. It is not going to ruin me. I will put a stop and I'm going to respond positively. You see, you can choose to respond positively because God's grace. God has given his grace to you. Everyone is given a measure of faith. And along with that faith, it is grace. And you've got to do something. You cannot say, you know, oh, blame this fella, blame that, blame your history, blame everything. You can know. I'm going to put a stop to it. I'm going to look to God. His grace is sufficient for me. He's going to help me. He's going to help me rise higher because at the end of the day, I have an inheritance greater than any inheritance here on earth. Eternity. And that is my inheritance. Let's close our eyes and let's Pray today, God, I need your grace. It is going to be sufficient for me. And what I'm going through today, God, I need your grace. And I know you are there for me. And I can get out of this situation. Job got out of his situation. Peter got out of this situation. Paul got out of his situation. Moses got out of his situation. You can get out of your situation today. But what you need to do is respond. Towards God, not towards yourself, not towards what you can do, you cannot do. You respond, God, your words say, I'm your child, you're with me. Amen. Let's reach out to God this morning. Let Jesus, let Jesus help you. Don't be weary in your faith, but in your faith say, Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will choose to be glad in it. I will not choose to be grumpy. I will not choose to give up, surrender, but I will choose to turn it around by the word of God. By the word of God, I'm going to turn it around. And God wants the best for you. That's what Jesus said. You have not left anything, but here now and even eternity, I promise you, I'm going to add it to you. But you got to turn to Jesus. Don't turn to your strength. Don't turn to anything in this life. But turn to Jesus. Let's reach out to him. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Ghost. I want to encourage you to come. You get God baptized. Maybe for some time you have not had the Holy Ghost. Maybe you're in your health problem. All of us have. I have. But we don't allow the health to tie us down. We say, yes, God. I'm going to come to you and I'm going to be healed. I will respond to God. And God is good. And he's good all the time. Love, bless.